Hello students and welcome back to Thermodynamics. In this very important part of the chapter, we are going to study some different types of processes. Let me list down all these processes for you. We have isothermal, isobaric, isochoric, adiabatic, irreversible, reversible and cyclic processes. These are the different types of processes that we have to study. So let's start with isothermal process. All right, we'll keep all the others aside for now. And we will start with isothermal process. Well, it's very simple. As the name suggests, isothermal process is that process where temperature of the system remains constant throughout the process. Temperature remains constant. Temperature does not change. So, for example, if it is an exothermic reaction, whatever heat is given out, that heat is removed so that the temperature remains constant. So we can say that delta T, that is change in temperature, is zero. We can also say that the change in internal energy, that is delta U, is also zero. Now, some of you may be wondering, what is this internal energy? But then don't really worry about it. Internal energy is something that we are going to study in the next few modules. But just to give you an idea, internal energy is the energy which is present in the system by default. You know, kinetic energy and potential energy. All these energies put together, they are called as internal energy. Now, internal energy depends on the temperature because if you increase the temperature, you are increasing the kinetic energy of the molecules. So if the temperature does not change, internal energy will also not change. So here we are. Let's write it together. Temperature remains constant. Delta T is zero and change in internal energy is also zero. This is an isothermal process. Let's talk about the next process that is isobaric process. Isobaric process is that process where pressure remains constant. Pressure of the system remains constant throughout the process. That kind of a process is called as isobaric process. Now, in this process, the change in pressure is zero. Pressure is constant. Can you think about any process which is isobaric? It's really very simple. All the experiments which are conducted under open atmosphere, all the open experiments, they are all conducted under constant atmospheric pressure. So such experiments are all isobaric because the pressure, the atmospheric pressure under which these experiments are conducted, it doesn't change. So there we are. Isobaric process is that process in which pressure remains constant and delta P is zero. The next process is isochoric process. Now this isochoric process is a process in which volume of the system remains constant throughout the process. To, in order to make you understand this, I have... Now, since volume does not change, volume is constant. So we can say that change in volume is zero. Delta V is zero. Now, in order to make you understand what exactly is going on here, what are we talking about? Let me take this beautiful frame of animation next to me, which shows a wheel being moved with the help of a piston and cylinder arrangement. Now, this is exactly what goes on in a steam engine. All right. Anyway, now here you can see that the volume inside the piston is constantly changing, right? The volume inside the piston is constantly changing and that change in volume is causing this wheel to move. But what if this volume wouldn't change? What if it was constant? Will the wheel move now? Well, it obviously won't. Which means that in isochoric process, since the volume does not change, no work can be done. Earlier, work was being done. The train, the engine was moving, the wheel could turn. 
because the volume was changing. But now, since the volume is not changing, the wheel cannot move, no work can be done. So remember students, in isochoric process, volume is constant and hence delta V is zero and hence work done is also zero. Let's move on to the next process now that is adiabatic process. In adiabatic process, remember there is no exchange of heat between the system and the surrounding. Now since there is no exchange of heat, we can say that Q, that is heat exchanged, is zero. Again, in order to make you understand what's going on here, let's take a frame of animation here. I have a container which is lined in black, right? Now, this container has an outline of insulation. So this thick gray insulation that you can see outside the container. It does not allow any heat transfer between the system and the surrounding. And inside this container, I have a gas. Let's say I dissolve the internal boundary like this. Now, the natural tendency of the gas is to expand. But in order to expand, it requires energy. Where will it get this energy from? Will it get this energy from the surrounding? Well, of course, that will not happen because this gray insulation that you can see here, this is going to prevent any transfer of energy from the surrounding to the gas. That's not going to happen. So the gas will have to spend its own internal energy and it will have to expand. Now, this kind of an expansion is adiabatic expansion because no transfer of heat happened between the system and the surrounding. So we can say that Q is zero. Here, I would like to take a moment and I would like to acknowledge a very common doubt among the students. I am often asked whether isothermal process and adiabatic process are the same because if there is no heat exchanged, the temperature should remain the same. But do not get confused, students. In isothermal process, temperature remains constant. In order to keep this temperature constant, some excess heat has to be removed. Or maybe some heat may have to be added in some cases in order to keep the temperature constant. Because some reactions are exothermic, some reactions are endothermic. So they may increase or decrease the temperature of the system. In order to keep that temperature constant, we may have to remove or add some heat. Whereas in adiabatic process, there is no exchange of heat. Just like the expansion of the gas that we saw. The gas expanded on its own internal energy and internal energy, as we have just seen, it depends on the temperature. If internal energy is used, the temperature will also drop. So let's write this down here in isothermal process, heat is exchanged to keep the temperature constant. Whereas in adiabatic process, the temperature changes because there is no exchange of heat between system and surrounding. Whatever work is to be done is to be done on its own internal energy. And if internal energy is consumed, the temperature changes. Okay, so I hope this is clear to all of you. Isothermal process, isobaric process, isochoric process, and adiabatic process. The next type of process, we will compare irreversible and reversible processes among themselves. Okay, both irreversible and reversible will be covered together. Now, let's say I have a cylinder and a piston arrangement. And inside this cylinder, we have a gas. Let's say I was to push down this piston to such an extent that the gas gets liquefied, very high pressure. In one shot, I am directly compressing the gas. And now I lift the piston. Will this liquid suddenly get converted into a gas? Of course, that will not happen because it was a one step process. In one step process, there is no equilibrium. 
So it will take a while, it will take a few minutes, but after a few minutes, the liquid will slowly get converted back to a gas. It will not happen suddenly. Like, you know, the conversion of gas to liquid was sudden. Similarly, the reverse conversion will not be sudden. So in this process, because it was a one step process, there was no equilibrium. And this type of a process is called as irreversible process. Whereas if I had to do the same thing, but I did that in small, small steps. So I do one small compression followed by another small compression, followed by another small compression, and so on and so forth, you will see that slowly, slowly, the gas is getting converted to liquid, right? And now at any point, if I reverse the process slowly by slowly, now you will see that the process will come back to its original position. So here, we did the process in infinite number of steps. It was a quasi-static process. That means in every single step, there was equilibrium. So such a process is called as reversible process. So I hope the difference is clear to all of you. Irreversible process takes place in a single step, whereas reversible process takes place in infinite number of small steps. And at every single step, there is equilibrium within the system because it is such a small step. Okay, so let's take a look at irreversible and reversible processes. In irreversible process, as we see, it's a one step process. The driving force is significantly greater than the opposing force because it is a one step process. The driving force is much, much greater. There is no equilibrium within the process. Okay, whereas in reversible process, it happens in infinite number of steps. The driving force is just slightly greater than the opposing force. In irreversible, it was significantly greater. In reversible, it is just slightly greater than the opposing force. And there is equilibrium at every single stage in the process. So we have seen isothermal, isobaric, isochoric, adiabatic, reversible and irreversible processes. Let's move on to the last type of process that is cyclic process. Okay. In order to understand what is a cyclic process, let's consider, let's consider a cylinder with a piston. Yet again, you can see that this cylinder has got some gas inside with a piston at the top. I am going to plot the pressure versus volume for this particular cylinder. And as you can see right now, as we speak, the pressure inside this cylinder is incredibly high. The gas is compressed. The pressure is very high and the volume is very low. So I can plot my point on the graph somewhere here. You can see that the pressure is really very high and the volume is really very low. Now, if I were to expand this gas isothermally. This is how the graph changes, right? The pressure decreases and the volume increases. This is an isothermal expansion. This will take my process to the second point. Again, let me expand the gas, this time adiabatically. That means there is no exchange of heat between the system and the surrounding. So first, we had the gas at a very high pressure. We expanded the gas isothermally by keeping the temperature constant. Next, we expanded the gas adiabatically by permitting no heat exchange between the system and the surrounding. Now, let's compress the gas isothermally. So as you can see, the pressure is increasing and the volume is decreasing. This is how my graph will look. This is what my graph will look like. Now for the last step, let's do another compression and this time adiabatic. Okay, what I have just explained to you is actually called as a Carnot cycle. This is supposed to be the most efficient form of an engine. Here, if you see, 
after doing all kinds of expansion and compression, after doing all sorts of things, my process has come back to the same place, back to the starting position. So after undergoing a series of changes, if the process comes back to its starting position, such a process is called as cyclic process. Obviously, if the process is back to its starting position, its temperature would not have changed. I mean, think about it. Temperature is a state function and we are back to the original state. So if the temperature does not change, will the internal energy change? So we can say that a cyclic process is a process in which the system, after undergoing a series of change, comes back to its starting position. And in this process, the internal energy does not change because the system is back to its original temperature. Now, again, a question which I am normally asked here is that, is there any difference between cyclic process and reversible process? Yes, well, there is. Remember that in this process, we had four steps. Isothermal expansion, adiabatic expansion, isothermal compression, and adiabatic compression. We had four steps. Each of these four steps may have been reversible or irreversible, which means a cyclic process is made up of different steps. Each of these steps may be reversible or irreversible. So let's take a look at the definition of cyclic process. It comes back to its initial stage after a series of changes. Okay, there is no change in internal energy because the system is back to its original temperature and individual steps may be reversible or irreversible. They may be done in one step or they may be done in infinite number of steps. So these are the processes that we need to know in thermodynamics. Isothermal, isobaric, isochoric, adiabatic, irreversible, reversible and cyclic process. Very important part of thermodynamics. Hope you've understood this. In the next part of thermodynamics, we will start with our discussion on internal energy. Thank you so much for watching.